Hey guys, it's Jacob from Living Healthy Every Day, and today I want to talk to you about histamine intolerance. So I used to have histamine intolerance, and it was the worst thing ever. Uh, it would actually keep me up at night feeling excessively hot, and no doctors would have any idea what was wrong with me. The only thing that would make me feel better were antihistamines, and so I contracted uh, a dysbiotic bacteria that created excess histamine in my gut. So I had a dysbiosis gut, dysbiotic gut, and I had to get rid of uh, dysbiosis in my gut. I also had a genetic predisposition to uh, detox uh, or to methylate worse, and so that made <laughs> methyl methylation problems worse, so that made uh, dealing with histamine and breaking it down even harder. And so I'm going to give you science-based uh, research that I did to heal my histamine intolerance and that can help you with your histamine intolerance. So what is histamine intolerance? So what is histamine? Histamine is a hormone and a neurotransmitter and a, uh, a chemical messenger, uh, to put it simply, that works in the body and it helps with vasodilation, and it helps with the immune system, helps with staying awake. Uh, and many people with histamine intolerance could not be doing what I'm doing right now, which is standing in the sun and getting sun on their face and on their body excessive amounts because this actually, this sun on my body increases histamine in the skin. And so histamine intolerance, it's the imbalance of what you've eaten and produced of histamine and your ability to break it down. So you can have too much histamine over time and that leads to histamine intolerance. Um, so mast cells, food poisoning, the metabolism of histamine, taking histamine, liberators, eating foods high in histamine, all contribute to histamine intolerance along with gut dysbiosis. Uh, so let's, let's get into it. What are common symptoms of histamine intolerance? Well, there's itching, there's nausea, diarrhea, uh, headaches, insomnia, uh, just feeling hot, uh, anxiety, vertigo, vomiting, uh, having a runny nose, coughing, sneezing, things like that. Th things that you naturally see when you have an allergic response to something. Uh, and it plays a role, histamine plays a role in like mastocytosis, uh, mast cell activation disorder and syndrome, uh, allergic reactions, anaphylaxis, arthritis, uh, inflammatory conditions, skin conditions such as uh, psoriasis, eczema, vitiligo, uh, gastric secretion, so when you're producing stomach acid and uh, appetite, of course. Uh, it helps regulate your sleep-wake cycle. Histamine helps regulate your sleep-wake wake, wake, uh, wake cycle along with orexin. Um, helps with learning and memory, your motor sy uh, system, muscle contraction, uh, and some neurological disorders, and cancer progression. Uh, and if you want to learn more about histamine and histamine intolerance and all the steps that you can take and I took uh, to uh, reducing histamine intolerance and getting your system back to normal, you can see it all on the blog, which it has a link in the description of this post. Uh, you can see that or you can just comment to me and I will reply with the link or if you have any questions I'll, I'll reply to the best of my ability. So dysbiosis is the imbalance of gut bacteria um, where you can have pathogenic or bad bacteria versus having a abundance of good bacteria that work individually for you. And problems with dysbiosis and histamine intolerance is if you have too much uh, histamine producing bacteria in your gut you'll have an excess amount of histamine leading to histamine intolerance. Um, so you have inflammasomes that are sensors that regulate the gut that will react to excess histamine. Uh, when you have too much inflammation uh, or bacterial overgrowth and things like that, uh, that disrupts the communication between bacteria and your uh, immune system. It also messes up your secretory, secretory uh, IgA um, that's the muco mucosal lining that houses all the uh, bacteria and also uh, helps activate mast cells. And so let's talk about what mast cells are. So you've got mast cells all over your body. 
uh, they're actually the first thing, the first part of our immune system that was here before we developed the immune system as being uh, eukaryotic beings. Um, <laughs> and so they release uh, all sorts of molecules, uh, including histamine. So you've got stress, uh, or CRH, um, corticotropin releasing hormone, which can cause mast cells. So imagine a mast cell uh, has all these little golf balls on it, and when they degranulate, they shoot off all these molecules all over, and one of them is histamine. So stress, corticotropin releasing hormone, can make these mast cells shoot out excess histamine, degranulate histamine. Uh, Interleukin-6 and interleukin-8 and other pro-inflammatory cytokines can increase the blood-brain barrier's uh, permeability. Um, so when your, your blood-brain barrier goes away, you can get brain fog and things like that. That's why a lot of people with histamine intolerance have brain fog. Uh, lectins can activate mast cells. Leptin uh, and the receptors uh, are found in human mast cells. Uh, you've also got leptin can activate uh, mast cells activate inflammation in mast cells. Uh, that's a problem with leptin resistance. Um, ghrelin, which makes you hungry and controls a bunch of other neuroimmunological functions, can activate mast cells. Nerve growth factor, which is a neurotrophic factor, unlike uh, brain derived neurotrophic factor, ciliary uh, neurotrophic factor, and glial cell derived neurotrophic factor can activate mast cells. So nerve growth factor activates mast cells. Um, nerve growth factor actually stimulates the release of histamine uh, and sensitizes certain receptors. Um, estrogen, so having an excess amount of estrogen, can make more histamine in the body. Substance P can release, release uh, histamine from mast cells. Um, VIP, neurotensin, secretin also stimulate mast cell release, uh, uh, histamine release. Uh, and somatostatin actually stimulates uh, histamine, so things like uh, melatonin would help with that. And then you've also got uh, so have you ever had food poisoning um, from like uh, fish specifically? So in fish they've got all this bacteria on them and they break down the hist histidine uh, on the fish, the, the bacteria on there, break down the histidine and produce excess histamine, so that's why old fish gives you this uh, food poisoning response. You get this allergic response. So people who are allergic to crabs and shellfish and stuff like that, uh, they get a uh, histamine intolerance induced uh, response, unless you actually have an allergy to fish, which is different. Um, so a few things help break down uh, histamine. Uh, you've got DAO, which is diamine oxidase, and then you've got uh, N-methyltransferase. Uh, which are two enzymes that break down histamine. And in the intestine, DAA, DAO usually breaks it down, uh, and it's excreted via the urine. Uh, and the metabolite, something that you would want to test for, is N-methylhistamine, uh, which would be a 24-hour urine test. And only a few labs in America do this, um, which you can see on the blog post below uh, where to get it done and all the biomarkers that indicate histamine intolerance uh, and mast cell activation disorder and things like that. So you've got a histamine releasing factor. Uh, it's a it stimulates uh, histamine release along with interleukin uh, four and thirteen. So it sensitizes mast cells and that's another problem. Uh, it can stimulate the secretion of interleukin eight, which I'm actually getting from the sun right now, uh, and other uh, inhibit other cytokines. Uh, and this shifts the body more towards a uh, Th2 uh, dominant immune reaction from his, uh, histamine releasing factor. Um, and if you want to more, learn more about genetics and things like that, you can also see that on the blog. I've got a, a whole part of the genetics. Um, so some of the common biomarkers with histamine intolerance uh, would be to look at alpha MSH to make sure that you're actually having a histamine problem. Uh, and not a problem with uh, MSH because MSH can also, uh, in melanocytes, uh, have very sim similar symptoms to histamine intolerance causing fl flushing and things like that. Um, so that's the first biomarker you want to look at. You want to look at N-methylhistamine, tryptase, neurotensin, estrogen levels, progesterone levels, complement C4A, uh, TGF-beta-1, 
interleukin-6, interleukin-8, and leptin levels. And those are all things that you can, if you don't have a doctor, uh, you can order those all through my website. I've got an easy place where you can do it. You just fill it out and you bring it to Quest or LabCorp, which is ever is easier for you. Um, and here's the protocol that I took. Uh, it may help you to uh, treat histamine intolerance. This is all science-based. Uh, everything has got Everything on the blog has references, um, so nothing is based uh, on suspicion. It's all based on science or studies and things like that. So you want to eat a low histamine diet, uh, and you can see all the list of what's included in that on the blog. Um, you want to increase enzymes to break down histamine, and you can see that also on the blog. You want to stabilize mast cells. You can. These are all things you can see on the blog. So I'm just going to give you the general topic, and if you want to get in depth on what to do, then go to the blog. So you want to stabilize mast cells, lower blood histamine, and then fix dysbiosis. And then other things you can do are work with nerve growth factor, uh, decrease certain inflammatory cytokines, and uh, like not take birth control. That wouldn't be me, but that would be someone else who's a, a woman, of course, uh, that's on birth control. Um, and then most people don't understand that you can also get histamine intolerance from taking antihistamines every night uh, or all the time. So when you take antihistamines, they only block uh, certain receptors. You've got four histamine receptors, uh, and most antihistamines only block one or two of them. And so if you're constantly blocking just two of them, it can actually react to the other uh, two or three, depending on which antihistamine you're taking. Uh, and increase their, their activation, uh, causing other problems that lead to histamine intolerance and other neurological problems. So if you want to learn more about that, that's on the blog. Uh, if this video helped you at all, please let me know in the comments and give it a thumbs up because that would really help. Uh, and if you want to see more videos like this on how, to, how I treated myself and how to treat uh, certain uh, problems, including histamine and mast cell problems and dysbiotic problems then subscribe and if you want to get updated on videos that come out right away then hit the little bell and if you want to read more about all this stuff then head over to the blog livinghealthyallday.com and you can see all about histamine intolerance uh, you can see about uh, supplements you can see tons of different things that relate to uh, neuro uh, immunology, neuroendocrinology, peptides, supplements, all sorts of things like that. So thanks guys for watching and stay beautiful.